Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover five common mistakes that I see people making when they're new to Inkscape. Now, I see questions related to these mistakes being asked daily on the forums that I'm on, so I'm hoping to help you avoid some of these more common mistakes. Um, before we get going with the first tip, sorry, the first mistake, I'm going to talk about my first tip, which is to use the status bar. Now, if you're not familiar with the status bar, it's this little area right down here that when you select an object, it gives you some information about it down here. So I've selected this block of text. It tells me that it's a text block and it gives me the font and the font size and the layer that it's on. So that can be really helpful. And it's going to be especially helpful when you're dealing with this first issue, trying to use Boolean operations on grouped objects. So let's see what I mean by that. This on the right here is the outcome that we're looking to achieve with these three items or objects over here. One might think that I could just select all of those and go up to the path menu and go union, but nothing happens. What should we do? Well, let's look down to the status bar. It says one of the objects is not a path, cannot perform Boolean operation. That's really helpful information. So what's going on with these? Well, okay, that's a rectangle. It's a path of four nodes. I click on these circles. Oh, it's a group of two objects. We already know that we can't perform Booleans on grouped objects, so we need to ungroup these. Control Shift G will do that for us. So now I have a circle, a circle, and a square. Let's select them all. Control Plus to Union, and there we go. The result that we're looking for. Now I'm going to back up just a couple of spaces. I'm going to back up once, back up twice. So now this, these two circles are a group again. And just to prove my point that you can't do any of the Booleans, I'm going to try to difference it. Nothing happens. Going to intersection, nothing happens. Exclusion, nothing happens. I could keep on doing this, but I'm sure you get the point. So, if you want a Boolean, uh, perform a Boolean operation on something, make sure it's all in group. An easy way to do that, just select everything, Control Shift G a couple times. When you get to the end of the groups, it will say no groups to ungroup in the selection. Perfect. We can hit Control Plus. Now we've got a unioned shape. Awesome. Now, the next one we're going to deal with is this text. And this star, um, what we might want to do is union these together. If I have them selected and I go control plus, well, again, nothing happens. One of the objects is not a path. And I can tell you right now that it is this text because this is telling me it's a group of four objects. And why is that? Well, it's because when you create text in Inkscape and then you convert this to a path. So let's go up here, path. Um, object to path, also control shift C for the keyboard shortcut. So it's no longer text, but it's a group of four objects. Inkscape will convert text to a group of paths. Um, so each character is individual and they're grouped with the rest of the characters. So we can just ungroup that control shift G like we've learned. And now we would be able to union these together if we wanted and see that this doesn't really look a whole lot different from this text over here, but this one is a group of four. This one is a path of 81 nodes. Cool. So if we want to join the text and the star, what we do is we control shift G to ungroup it. And we could just shift click the star now, control plus to union it. And there we go. We've, we've learned a little something about Booleans and grouped objects. Uh, mistake number two, thinking a stroke is a path. So you might see something like this where you have this border of a circle and an inner rectangle. You might try to you know export this uh, into your say vinyl cutting software and think you're going to cut this uh, this band out well that's not going to happen right now because what this band actually is if I go into outline mode I'll go up to view display mode outline you can see that's actually just a single line so this here is just a single path with four nodes it actually has no real width to it um, this one here is just a path with four nodes but it has a fill so you'll it'll look like a solid square in normal mode to get this to have that band or that border that we were seeing in normal mode, what we need to do is we need to convert stroke to path. So you can do that from the path menu, stroke to path, or you can use a keyboard shortcut like I prefer, which is control alt C. So I'll just click on that. And now you can see we have that width to it. So if something's acting a little funny, you know, you're, you're not sure why you're not actually, let's go back into normal mode there. Why you're, while your shape's not importing into another software program like you think it should, make sure that that stroke that you have applied to a path gets converted to a path before you move on. Hopefully that clears a little thing, a few things up there. Third one, using the union boolean and an object disappears. 
what I mean by that is a lot of times people will have something like this, some text in the middle of this border, uh, and they'll select the text, they'll select the border, they'll go to union it with control plus, and the text simply is gone. Well, why is that? Well, outline mode comes in handy here again. I'm gonna just undo that, control Z. Now I'm gonna hit control five to get into outline mode. I have to hit it a few times. So what we can see here is we've actually got what might look like a border, like that um, stroke that we converted to path before, but I've actually drawn this as a circle and another circle. So what I'm doing when I'm selecting this text and this outer circle is I'm actually unioning them. So everything inside of this circle gets joined to the circle and you end up with a big circle. Now you could use something like, uh, like a difference or um, exclusion or intersection to achieve some results. I'm not gonna cover the Booleans in this one, so I'm just gonna show you the simplest way how I would create this end result here, is I would select the inner circle, the outer circle, and I would use the difference, so control minus. So what that's going to do, so I'm just gonna actually go back to normal mode here quickly. I'm um, gonna give this inner circle a different color fill so it, it's obvious. So there's the inner circle, the outer circle selected. What am I doing? There we go. Uh, control minus, differences out that inner circle from the outer circle, and now we're left with that border. So now I could click on this text. It's already a path of 98 nodes. Shift click on that outer ring, control plus to union, and there I've recreated this over here. Um, one interesting thing I discovered about Inkscape 1.0 when I was making up these graphics for this tutorial is that control plus on a text object will convert it to a path. So if I have text, and I simply select it and go control plus, it creates a path of it, a group of paths. Uh, it gives you this error message, first of all, one of the objects is not a path. Um, but what it's done is it's automatically gone and it's done basically the object to path step for me with that control plus. So it's maybe a quirk or a little idiosyncrasy of Inkscape, but I found it interesting. So hopefully you do too. You can you know, use a control plus instead of the control shift C shortcut to object to path that. Okay, so let's move on to the, the fourth one here, which is trying to modify raster images in Inkscape. Now, briefly, the difference between a raster image and a vector image is a vector image is uh, an image that's made up of a series of points or dots and connected with lines. Uh, so this happy face, if I go into the node editing mode, you can see here's, here's a dot or a point around the perimeter, and there's a line connecting those. So that's how you actually get shapes uh, and things designed in Inkscape in a vector format. Now a raster image is like this one over here, which was originally this uh, happy face, which I converted and export, or, sorry, exported to a PNG. So it's now a bitmap or a, AKA raster image. If I zoom in really far on this, you can see that this image, it gets blurry because it's basically made up of grid of pixels with colors filled in to each individual pixel. So if you zoom in really far or you blow it up really big, it's going to start getting blurry. And I'm sure you've seen that in some uh, you know, of your digital camera photos that you've taken and zoomed in or tried to blow up really big. So they both have their strengths, but Inkscape working with raster images is not, uh, it's not Inkscape's strength. So what you need to do if you want to work with a raster image in Inkscape more or less is convert it to a vector first. So you can do that by selecting it, right clicking on it and going to trace bitmap. It'll bring up this dialog box and then you can watch uh, another tutorial on YouTube. I don't have any at this current time dealing with this, but there are a few out there and this will convert your bitmap image into a vector. Okay, so just quickly um, talking about vectors and bitmaps, don't try to manipulate bitmap images extensively in Inkscape. That's not what it's made for. And the fifth and final tip here, or mistake, is, well, this one's more of a tip. It's somewhat of a mistake. It's using the offset tool or feature instead of a stroke for outset borders. And what I mean by that is this over here. I have two text objects that I created and I converted to path. And then I went and I applied a stroke to this one and I applied a linked offset to this one. So if I click on this red, go back to my node edit tool, you can see I've got this little handle so I can increase or decrease this outset or offset. Now, the one drawback in my opinion when you do this is it leaves a rounded corner where the original item had sharp corners. 
I like to use the stroke feature because in this case here, you can see that the stroke has a nice crisp edge as well, which to me is desirable in a lot of cases. Now, it's, you know, it's not really a mistake if you, if you want to use the linked offset or outset or dynamic offset tools, go right ahead. Just know that you're going to end up with these rounded corners, which maybe isn't what you're looking for. Um, you, you'll probably want to watch another tutorial on how to actually convert this stroke down to a background. Uh, also, if you, you know, if you're even if you're using the linked offset, how you would create a background out of that. You can't just go right ahead and import this into your other software if that's what you're looking to do. If you're staying in Inkscape, that's fine. You can leave it as is. So I said that was the fifth and final, but there's actually one more tip that um, pe people seem to get tripped up by and that's when they'll go to draw something like a circle and they'll draw it out and I'm holding control to make it a nice round circle but it's not your eyes playing tricks on you or your computer glitching out there's actually no circle to be seen there so I'm gonna let go I have a bounding box but I have no circle so what the heck is going on and this is where people get tripped up when you have your opacity down here set to zero in this case mine set to 100 or your fill alpha set to zero in this case, you can see by this little sort of checkerboard transparency that that's probably what's going on here. So if you've drawn a circle or a square out and it doesn't appear to be there, it's a good chance it actually is on your screen. You just can't see it. Um, again, going to outline mode, so control five a few times. Look at this. I had this text hidden as well. It says my alpha was zero, but you found me. So let's go take a look at that. I'm gonna go uh, control shift F to bring up the fill and stroke dialog box. I'm gonna go back to my select tool and select this one here. So we can see it now because we're in outline mode and it, outline mode makes text a solid color. But if you look over here at your alpha, it is zero. So let's bump that up to say 50. Nothing changes in this view, but if I go back, control five to normal mode, or visible hairlines, let's go one more time. We're in just normal mode now. You can see it's got a gray color because it's got a 50, basically 50% 50 of its opacity is there. Let's bump that all the way up to 100. And now it's nice solid like text. Now down here, I actually had some text in this box here that I had set the opacity to zero on. So I'm just gonna crank that up to 100. And what has happened there? Or did I, maybe I just did the alpha on that one as well. No big deal. Just sometimes, just remember that. Um, like on this circle that I drew out somewhere around here. Where is it? There it is. I can make the opacity on that 100. However, sorry, the alpha on that 100. But if my opacity over here was zero, it would disappear as well. And Inkscape likes to remember um, the values you use of your last tool to draw something out. So if I make this red and I give it, let's say 50% um, opacity, and I go and I choose a rectangle, it's going to draw out with the same properties of the one that I previously changed. Now this uh, this behavior can be changed in your settings, but I think this is the default. So if I was to make this orange and I was to make this 100 and I was to go and draw out say a star, which oh, this is, uh, maybe I want that zero. So it actually looks, and that zero, so it actually starts to look like a star with five points. There we go. Um, What did I do there? Ah, oh, yes, five points. So it has kept the properties from the previous item that I changed. So just something to be aware of. And if you're drawing something out, it looks like it's not really there. Well, maybe go into outline mode or uh, control A to select everything to see if you've got a bounding box there. And then just you know select that one item and change its color or alpha or, or opacity and you'll be on your way in no time. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.